suggestion. Switch to a postum. <laughs> Makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes, present those two lovable old characters from the hill country, Lum and Abner. Remember the old proverb, try was never beaten? Well, I wonder how true that is in the case of a person who's grouchy and bad-tempered on account of indigestion. I dare say in that case you try hard enough to be cheerful and pleasant, but with indigestion it isn't always so easy to make the grade. So why not remember this? A frequent cause of indigestion is coffee nerves. For it's a well-known fact that although many people can drink coffee without getting upset, many others cannot. And that's why... When you think coffee disagrees with you, you can't do anything better than to try Postum. The reason being that Postum contains no caffeine or stimulant of any kind that could possibly cause you distress. And you will enjoy Postum, for it has its own distinctive, delicious flavor. A flavor that has made Postum the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes. And once you taste Postum, once you know how cheering and satisfying it really is, you wish you'd made Postum your regular mealtime drink long ago. So if coffee is spoiling your digestion and thereby making you an old grouch, try drinking Postum instead of coffee. See if you don't feel better even in a few days. And in two weeks, long enough to give Postum a really fair trial, see if you aren't your happy, smiling, good-natured self again. Drink Postum. There's a reason. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, friends, Florence Beaumont, the wealthy widow to whom Lum wrote a proposal of marriage after seeing her advertisement for a husband in the county seat newspaper, arrived in Pine Ridge last Monday. And much to Lum's consternation, she brought with her her seven children by her first marriage. As we're looking on the little community today, we find Squire Skimp over at the Jot and Down store talking with Lum. Listen. Uh, no, Lum, I'm afraid that wouldn't make any difference. She has that letter, letter that uh, you wrote her asking her to marry her. So she's got a clear case of a breach of promise if she wants to sue. Well, couldn't I turn around and sue her for misrepresenting things? She never said a word in that advertisement about having all them youngins. Uh, no, well, uh, you should have found out more about her, Lum, before you proposed to her. Yeah. Of course. Now, the idea may not occur to her that she could sue. I don't know, Squire. I can tell by looking at her. She, she'll sue. Yes, well, now, the thing to do is uh, just not to offend her in any way, Lum. Be as nice to her as you can. Trouble is, if I get to being nice to her, I'll encourage her. Mm. She will want to marry me sure enough, then. Yes, yes, it's so cool. Well, of course, now, it might be that after you get to know the little lady better, Lum, you might want to marry her. But remember now, she's got all that money. Yeah, and she's got all them kids, too. Well, of course, I've never seen her or the children either, as far as that no, If you had, you wouldn't be trying to get me to marry her, neither. You'd be trying to study up some way to get out of this mess. Yes. Well, uh, what kind of a looking lady is she, Long? Well, she's sort of red-headed and fat and the uh, meanest look out of them eyes I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Red-eyed, too, you might say. Well... And a whole mouthful of gold teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, has she said anything about uh, how much money she's got, Long? Well, she ain't come right out and said, but... I don't care if she's got a hundred million dollars, Squire. I've decided I don't want to get married. Yes, yes, well, that's your business. Well, I might take the case over and talk to her, Long. See if I can get the idea of marriage out of her head for you. Well, I don't know where it'll do any good or not, Squire. She's been telling around to everybody that she's mad that me and her is going to get married. Well, that's bad. Yes, yeah, she's liable to give you some trouble. I got Abner over there now talking to her. Yes. Yeah, he's going to talk to her, tell her a bunch of stuff about me to where I hope she ain't going to want to marry me. Yes, well, that's what I had in mind, too, Long. 
make you appear so ridiculous that she'll be glad to forget the whole thing and go on back to Nashville. In fact, if you can get her to accept uh, your proposal in writing, then if she does leave town, well, you can sue her for a uh, court bomb. No, no, I don't want her sue her. Just get her out of town. That's all I want. Folks have been gushing a life out of me. Everybody I see starts calling me Papa and asking me how my family is and all that stuff. <laughs> embarrassing. Yes, well, I've heard some awful funny remarks made too long. I ain't heard none of that all very funny. Well, down around the barber shop, they've had some good laughs out of it. <laughs> you say you believe you can make her forget the whole thing going back home? Yes, yes, I do, Ron. Of course, I had to take some of my time to work it out. Uh, well, how much would you say it's worth to you to get her to leave town? I don't know. I ain't got much. Well, if she sues you for breach of promise, huh, she's liable to take what little you have got, though. Yeah. I had one of them suits once. What do you charge, Squire? Oh, I don't know what it is. Ought to be worth $25 to get rid of her, I think. Yeah, well, supposing your idea don't work and she don't leave. Oh, well, I'll give you a guarantee on it, huh? If she don't leave town, why, you don't owe me a nickel. But you will have to agree to do just as I tell you to, or you will pay me $25 regardless. Well, maybe it'll be something I don't want to do, though. Well, Arm, I can't guarantee to get her to leave town if you won't work with me. Well, what is it you want me to do? Well, I don't know. I haven't decided, Arm, but uh, you'll have to work with me on it. All right. I'll have to make you appear very ridiculous. So absurd that she won't want to marry you any under, under any condition. Like, uh, well, now, wait a minute. How you aiming on making me ridiculous? Well, I told you I didn't know, Ron. I'll think of something, though. You can depend on that. I'll make you ridiculous. Don't worry about that at all, Ron. I don't know, Squire. But we better talk this over first. You, you figure out what all you want me to do, and I'll look over the list and then let you know. Well, all right. If that's the way you want it, well, I'll go over there and have a talk with her and see what I can study up on. Yeah. Quicker we can get her out of them tourist cabins over there, the better off we'll be, too. Never had but three of them furnished, and it's taken to all three of them for her and the youngins. Now, how many children has she got, Lone? Seven. Oh. Two sets of twins in the bunch. Yes, well, yes, that is a rather large family for a man to just deliberately marry into. Well, it ain't that so much. You, you just ought to see them. Wildest bunch of heathens I've ever seen. Yeah. They just about wrecked that tourist camp. All that stove wood we had hauled in there, they built a big bonfire and burnt that up. Mm. Had to call out the fire department and all that stuff. And their mama never even whipped them for it. Said they just playing. Well, playing. <laughs> Hear her tell it, them children can't do nothing wrong. Ball me out for putting the fire out. Yes, well, now, the children probably need some man to tame them down a little. Um. Yeah, might help, but I don't want to be the man, I know that. Just at least start training wild, wild animals. <laughs> That's who she ought to marry, the wild animal trainer. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> He's out there yesterday chunking rocks at everybody would come by out there. Around Uncle Henry Lunsford, clean up on the porch of Dick Huddleston's store. Why, the little scallywags. Yeah, knocked the window lights out of one of them streetcars. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know whether I want to go over and see her or not, Lum. Well, if they're in one of them rock-throwing humors, you better keep an eye on them. <laughs> they ain't fooling when they turn one of them rocks loose. I found that out. <laughs> Look at here. Well, for goodness sake, Lum. You mean one of them hit you there with a the rock? Yeah, it was supposed to be a snow snowball, but there was a rock inside of it. Yes, well, it's been a rock there connected with your head. I can yeah. see that. I snowball. can feel it, too. No, I wouldn't make a bump like that, no. And everybody's saying I ought to go ahead and marry the widow. Oh, wait a minute, Shauna comes out now. Maybe you've done some good talking to her. Yes, well, I hope so for your sake, Mom. That would be terrible, married to a woman like that. After living quietly for all these years by yourself. Yeah, come in, Abner. Yeah, hurry, hurry. Hello, Squire. Yes, how are you today, Abner? Oh, first rate, I reckon. Well, what'd she say, Abner? How'd you come out? Well, I come out of running, but she never said a whole lot. Running? Yeah, them kids out there chunking rocks. That woman's crazy, long. Well, tell me what she said and what you said. Well, I just told her all that stuff that you said to tell her. Told her that you was unhonest and... You had a bad name around town here for beating your debts and all that stuff. You did, huh? Yes, he said she'd make a new man out of you. 
said folks just never understood you. That was her trouble. Never understood me, huh? Yeah. Then I give her that and about you having such a bad temper and beating up on people when you got mad. <laughs> That's it, I what she say. Well, yeah, she said she'd like to see you try that on her once. Hmm. She'd tame me down. Said her first man thought he was mean, too, so she busted a chair over his head. I found out one thing, Olaf. She's been married four times. Four times? That's what she said. Said she never saw a man yet that she couldn't get along with. See that what I'm up again, Squire? Yes, it looks like you've got yourself in some trouble, Lee. Well, I keep married. That's all there are to it. She said she almost got married three or four months ago, Long. Oh, Greenies, I wish she had it. Said he backed out on her and she sued him for breaches of promises. Oh, my goodness. You might as well get yourself a lawyer right now, Long. Oh, Greenies, I'm going to get her out of town some way or other. Well, she can't leave now, Long. Her little girl's sick. Sick? Yeah, one of the young and sick in bed said she had a fever all last night. Well, soon she's up, we got to study up some way to get her out of town. Yeah, well, I, I called Doc Miller, and he come in just as I was leaving a while ago. Wouldn't surprise me to see him just stay here, though, long where you and her gets married or not for. She said she likes Pine Ridge better than every town she ever seen in her life. Yeah, I ought to have had more sense to answer that advertisement in the first place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Squire, Grannies, you better go over there and talk to her and tell me what to do. I'll do anything you say. I don't care what it is. And she said she wanted you to send some groceries over there too long. Well, did you collect for that last batch we sent over? No. She said you take care of it. Said she was here as your guest, and she refuses to pay rent over at the tourist camp, too. Oh, my. Uh, go ahead and answer the phone, Amber. Oh, yeah, yeah. Things ain't liable for no bill. She runs up around town here, Emma Squire. Why, I wouldn't think so long. Hello? Got them down, store. Who? Oh, yeah. She has. For the land sakes. Uh-huh. Oh, I won't, I won't. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll tell him. Goodbye. As Doc Miller along. Says that little girl's got the whooping cough and he's got to quarantine him. And said the widow wants you to come over there right away and get some medicine for her. Well, it looks as though Lum has really gotten himself into something this time. I wonder if you can see this picture grow before your eyes as I can. Here's a man with work to do, and not too much time to do it in. He's a tired man, priming himself with coffee, cup after cup of it. And finally, he's an irritable man. Nervous, jittery, hard to get along with. You know, that may even be a picture of you yourself. And like the man in the picture, maybe your nervousness, too, is due to coffee nerves. For while many people can drink coffee without getting jittery, many others should never touch it. Well, I'd like to suggest, if you think you have coffee nerves, that you switch to Postum. For Postum has no caffeine, no stimulant, nothing in it to set your nerves on edge. And Postum will surely appeal to you, both for its cheering, fragrant aroma and distinctive, full-bodied flavor that's Postum's own. So see what happens. If you're bothered by coffee nerves, see if switching to Postum for a couple of weeks doesn't really make you happier. See if your nerves aren't steadier again. Ask your grocer for Postum tomorrow. <laughs> Don't forget, friends, to come along with us next Friday evening at this same time when we again visit Pine Ridge with Lum and Abner. Lou Cosby speaking. And remember, Postum, your best bet for a good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>